over the rest of our day, we're going to talk about section 8.4. And 8.4 is going to be your favorite. What's your favorite thing to do besides fractions? Graphing. Really? Oh, this is easy graphing, though. This is as far as we go in graphing. Isn't that nice? Dividing fraction. No, it's word problems. <laughs> That's your favorite. Why, Mr. Leonard, are you such a jerk? Well, it's my job to be a jerk. I love my job. We're going to talk about something called variation, and then we're going to do some problem solving. Of course, problem solving means word problems. Now, fortunately, in this section, most of the word problems are very, very similar. So I can really tell you how to do every single one of them, which is good. So variation and problem solving. Oh my. You know there's really two types of variation. We have something called direct variation, and we have something called inverse variation. You deal with these on a day-to-day -day basis. You're going to understand what these concepts are. We just have to take those concepts, run with them, and apply them to some word problems. That's basically the idea of this section. We're going to try to accomplish some direct variation first. I'll give you a couple examples of direct variation before we go any further. I'll give you a mathy explanation in just a second, but here's what direct variation means to you. It means if one thing goes up, another thing goes up. For instance, how many people have jobs in here? These work. Good, okay. Most likely you get paid by the hour, right? If you work more hours, what happens to your pay? So if you work more, you get more money. That's why people work, right? To get more money. If you work less, what happens to your pay? It goes down. They're tied together. One goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. That's direct variation. The more you do one thing, the more you have another thing. And the more you have a, one thing, the more you have another thing. They're, they're tied together. They both go up and they both go down at the same time. It's not like this, right? So another example is like Disneyland. The more time you spend at Disneyland, the more fun you will have. <laughs> That, actually, that might not be true. It might be the more time you spend, the less fun you have. Now, let's just pretend the more time you spend there, the, the more fun that you're having. Yay, we're having so much fun. The teacups and you throw up. Oh, it's fantastic. That's what direct variation means. It means as one thing goes up, the another thing goes up. Or in terms of X and Y, as X increases, Y also increases. So if y varies directly, it's another way we can say direct variation. If y varies directly as x, you can hear that a lot. If y varies directly, the key word there is directly. If y varies directly as x, right there that's tied x and y together, okay, in a very specific relationship. It says, as x goes up, y also goes up. So if y varies directly as x, I'll say it this way. y goes up when x goes up. Or y goes down when x goes down. They're tied together. Fortunately, in variation, the formulas are really quite simple. They're, they're not anything like extravagant. Here's how direct variation will always look. It simply has your first variable, which is tied to your second variable. Now, I do have to make a point here. We're not always going to be using the letters X and Y. This could be uh, dollars and hours, couldn't it? The dollars you make varies directly as the hours you work. Are you getting the picture there? So we could have D and, uh, sorry, dollars and hours, so D and H. We could have D and H instead of Y and X. We could have that. So it, the Y and the X are really arbitrary. They, they don't matter that much. It's the idea that one thing is tied to the other, and as one thing goes up, the other thing goes up. So Y varies directly as X means Y equals something times X. Y 
want you to look at this. If you're multiplying something, if you're multiplying something, won't this go up as this goes up? Mm -hmm. Say k is a constant. Okay, k doesn't change. So k is a constant. It's called the constant of variation. And we'll be finding k in all of our problems. If k stays the same and you start raising x, notice you're multiplying this number by, by x. If you start raising x up, y has got to go up. This would be exactly the case of a, an hourly employee. K is going to be your hours, the, the dollars per hour that you make. So you guys make what? Ten dollars an hour, maybe? Nine, eight, what? <laughs> you would? Okay, I'm going to ask you how much you make there, Daniel. We'll say, we'll say that you make nine dollars an hour, okay? K would be nine. If you work five hours, you get 45 bucks. Did I do that math right? Okay. If K goes up to ten hours, you make ninety dollars. Does that make sense? If if X goes up even more, you make you make even more. So if your hours go up, your dollars go up. This is direct variation. Doesn't necessarily have to be X and Y, but that K, that will always be in your, your problem. That will be a constant of variation. Let's do one example and then we'll call it a day today. Suppose y varies directly as x. That's the key statement. Suppose y varies directly as x. That right there tells you how to set up your equation. If y is 24, when x is 8, what I want to do is find k and set up the direct variation equation. That sounds all pretty complicated if we don't know what we're doing. But let's go through this piece by piece. First thing, this is a direct, there's two, there's gonna be two words. There's direct and indirect or inverse. So we're looking for either direct or indirect or inverse. Now I've covered those two things, so naturally it's gonna be direct, but that's what I want you to look for. Is this direct? Yes. Yeah, it says directly up right up there. And then we read that, read about it. It says y varies directly as x. What that means to you is right off the bat, if y varies directly, what it means is y equals k times x. Listen carefully, please. Please listen. Direct means k times. I'm going to say that a lot. k times. Direct means k times something. k times something. Inverse, when we get to this, is going to be k over something. So the relationship between uh, direct and inverse is k times for direct, k over for inverse or indirect. Okay, that means to bit divided by. That's what we're, I'm kind of previewing that for tomorrow. But right now, when we read direct, we should be k times, not k over, k times. So we have the first thing, y, equals k times, very directly, as the second thing, x. Hey, do you know how much y is? Great. Do you know how much x is? Do you know how much k is? Not yet. But we know that 24 equals k times 8, or 8k, it's fine. Can you solve for k? Yeah, it has to give you all the information to do this. If we divide by 8, that was relatively painless, right? <laughs> relatively painless. You have to do one more thing, though. You don't leave it here. You have to do one more thing. You see, right now we found k. We're not done with the problem yet, though, because we want to write the equation. Here's the only thing you need to do now. You go back up to where you started y equals k times x, have you found k? Then all you do is take this value, plug into that number, and rewrite this part of it. So without the 24 and the 8, you just use the 24 and the 8 to solve for k. Then we rewrite our equation. So we're going to have y equals, y equals what? Three. How much? Three. Three what? 3x. That's it. 
That's your direct variation equation. So we notice direct, we said the basic equation, we fill out some numbers that they give you, you solve for k, you rewrite it. Now, the reason why we write this is because the next part of this question is going to be this. Find y when x is equal to 10. Can you do that? How much would y be? 30. Find x when y equals 20. You have 20 over 3. You can do that sort of thing. So we use this to set up the equation. We set up the equation because eventually we're going to answer different questions about that. This will lead us into some actual word problems later where we're, we're working on stuff. We'll start with one of these tomorrow. That'll be the end for today. We were talking about direct variation. Can someone give me an example of what direct variation means? Remember that uh, we're talking about something that when one thing goes up, another thing goes up. Hours and That's right. That's the example I gave you last time. Have you thought about any different examples besides hours and wages? Sure, that is direct, right? Because as your hours go up, the amount of money you make goes up. We, we talked about that. Anything else that you can think of? Your what now? Your heart rate when you go faster, work out. Sure, okay. So you exercise more, your heart rate goes up. That's pretty much tied together. That'd be kind of silly if you exercise more and your heart rate went down, right? That'd be kind of, that'd be crazy. Or if you rest it and your heart just starts going, mm -hmm. you need to exercise, your heart's going to explode. That'd be good for some people, I think. Just start getting you out there, getting going. But yeah, that's the right variation. It means as one thing goes up, the other thing also goes up. And what we realize is that if we're talking about variables x and y, if x goes up, y goes up. That y depends on our x, and so we have our equation y equals k times x. I made it really clear yesterday that direct is k times. You see, we're going to be talking about inverse or indirect variation in just a bit, and we're going to have k over. And that's kind of like a little preview that we talked about yesterday. Let's do one example to really get our brains kind of roll on this stuff, and then we'll move on, okay? So this is going to look similar to the one we did yesterday, but let's suppose y varies directly as x. Right there, that tells you what type of equation you're working with. When we say varies directly, the key word there is direct. So we know automatically the first thing is de dependent on the second thing. In this case, that's y is dependent on x, and we're doing k times. That's what that's telling you. That's what we learned yesterday. Let's say if y equals 20, when x is, let's say, 15. What we're going to do, we're going to find k again, and then we're going to write the equation. So find k and write the direct variation equation. Hey, by the way, uh, when we're looking at this thing, what is k? So, okay, so once we find it, is it ever going to change for this particular problem? All right, so you tell me what's the first thing we might want to do in our problem here? What now? Okay, how are we going to find k? Firstly, do you know what equation we're using? What's. Say that louder? Y equals k times x. Sure, and the reason why we know it's k times, what's the